Do others see Jesus in you? What joy it will be at set of sun in mansions beyond the blue to find some souls that you have won. Let others see Jesus in you. Then live for Christ both day and night. Be faithful, be brave and true. And lead, lead the lost to life and light. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. That's a permissive word, let. Let others see Jesus in you. Keep telling the story, not just verbally, but by your life. Keep telling the story. Be faithful and true. Let others see Jesus in you. You see, Jesus came to this earth to fulfill a task of the Father. He came to save sinners and to make disciples out of those who accept him and trust him and profess him openly and unashamedly. That's the reason why when you get saved by the grace of God, the first act of obedience is to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. That's an open and public confession of faith that you're trusting Christ and you're going to live a new life in him. You're saved today. You who are saved today. He says are, are like that city on a hill that cannot be hid. But that is only true if you have genuinely trusted him as your Lord and Savior. Paul said in Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to all men everywhere. Now, folks, when the light's not shining, or if the light's not there, is it because that we really haven't trusted Christ or is it that we're just not willing to give him everything in our life to trust him wholly and completely? You see, many, hear me well, many in this world today, throughout time, throughout history, profess the name of Jesus but they do not possess Christ in their heart. That's what religion will do for you. Christianity is much more than a religion. It's a relationship. It's a relationship of Christ in an individual that we're not willing and unashamedly to declare. We're going to declare, Jesus is the Lord of my life. Jesus is my Savior. I'm not ashamed of that. Amen. I don't care. And praise God, I think things are fixing to change. I don't care whether it's politically correct or not. If you're lost, you're going to hell. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. I've never heard Jesus Christ and Lord Jesus Christ and Creator and God mentioned more in an inauguration speech than I heard the other day. Now, my dear people, we as Christians pray, pray, pray. God has answered our prayer. Now, let's be faithful to God and make sure that our life is lived so that Others can see Jesus in us. Is that important to you? One said amen. amen. 
Are we going to stagger around and say, well, he said amen, so I say amen, so I say amen. Is Jesus important to you? Is the light of the world important to you? Is the message of Christ important to you? Then you've got to let others see Jesus in you. You see the purpose of the light. Being in the disciples is more important than the physical light. This spiritual light is to bring Illumination is to illuminate. It's to bring visibility and understanding in the hearts of those that are in darkness, those that don't know they're in darkness. It's our responsibility to make sure that we deliver the truth, that we share the light of Christ who lives in our heart. You may not like this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You are a missionary. You are a spokesman for God to declare Jesus Christ in this world. That's what he saved us to do. He didn't call everybody to be preachers, evangelists, or teachers, but he did call every one of us to be missionaries, ambassadors, representing him in this dark world. Do others see Jesus in you? Keep telling the story. Some will hear Some will ignore it. But that's where the condemnation is that John talked about. Many, many don't want to come to the light. They don't want to understand. They won't accept it. That's not our responsibility is to make them accept something they don't want to accept. That's a good thing about Christianity. We don't kill folks that don't believe our way. Our responsibility is to live and declare the truth of Jesus Christ and live in such a way that they will want what we got. And I don't care what you own, what your possessions are. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, that's the greatest possession that you can have. If you won the lottery today, everybody around us would know it. Well, son, we've got something a lot better than the lottery. Do you know that my father, how many of you know my father? Well, he's your father, too, if you're saved. How many of you know my father? He owns all the lotteries. Do you know that? It's his. You say, God don't gamble. No, he don't gamble. He just tells you this is the way it is. You can accept it or you can reject it. You accept it, you're going to heaven. You go say, don't accept it, you're going to hell. And I preach that's a pretty point. I mean, that's pretty straight and to the point. Yep, that's the way I'm in it. Of course, what Jesus said, and I want to tell you what Jesus said. You want to hear what Jesus said? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light, and no man's going to the Father except through me. Isn't that the same as saying, if you're saved, you're going to heaven. If you're lost, you're going to hell. Same truth is there, isn't it? That's the principle of truth of God's word. Keep telling this story. Be faithful and true. Let others see Jesus in you. Do others see Jesus in you? Now, folks, I'm not just whistling Dixie this morning. I'm not talking to empty chairs. I'm talking to each one of us today. Do others see Jesus in you? Look in the mirror and ask yourself the question, do others see Jesus in me? Am I living a life to where that they can truly see Jesus? They can hear about Jesus? That they can come to know Jesus? What do I need to change in my life to make it to where that Jesus is going to be the Lord, the boss of my life so others can see Jesus? I wonder how many of us will will be willing to truly humble ourselves before God and do that unashamedly today. 
Let me, listen to me, folks. Things are not going to change if we don't change. Apostle Paul said in 2 John, uh, 2 Corinthians verse 5, verse 17, chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a changed individual. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. We're new in Christ Jesus. Now we need to act like it. Amen? Three amens? Like I said, you don't put anything into it, you're not going to get anything out of it. When you say something, I know you're listening. When you don't, I think you might have gone to sleep. I might send somebody back there to wake you up. You're saved today. And like a city on a hill, if you're saved by the grace of God, genuinely have Jesus Christ in your Lord, uh, in your life, you, you just cannot hide that. A songwriter wrote a song that I like the words to. It's entitled, Now I Belong to Jesus. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever or separate. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now, I belong to him. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to him. That's shouting ground, isn't it? Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. You see, the true believer who is a Christ follower, his child, has a possession that can't help but shine forth in a dark world. And sinners are lingering in darkness all around us in bondage and don't know it. And all Christ asked us to do, saved us to do, is to shine forth as a true light. You are the light of the world. So, look at the last part of our verse that we read today in verse 16. Or have you already closed your Bible getting ready to go home? Verse 16 says what? Let your light, let your light so shine. Whose? You, followers. You believers, you disciples, let your light shine. Who said that? Jesus is teaching. Jesus is preaching. And let me tell you, when he speaks, it's more than what E.F. Hutton has to say. We need to listen to what Jesus says. You're the light of the world. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are to so live so that others might see the light. Jesus is the light. And the light lives where? Where does the light live? Is it in our heart? We'll say it, in my heart. In my heart. Now, have we turned the switch off? Have we turned the switch off so nobody can see the light? You see? He said, if you're saved by the grace of God, when you got the true light in your life, it's like a city sitting on a hill. You can't hide it. If there's light there, you can't hide it. Yeah. 
You are to so live that Christ may be seen in all that you say, in all your speech, in all your conversation, in all of your thoughts, in all of your actions. That's what the songwriter meant when he says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let your light so shine where? Look at the last part of that verse. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Boy, that takes the me, me, me out of our living, doesn't it? If me is all I can think about, if me is all I have my focus upon, me and mine and my possessions is all I have my focus upon, yeah, the light's very dim, isn't it? Living the Christian life is not a boast about I'm a believer, I'm a good man, I'm a good person. You see, it's not about how good I am. It's a boast about how good God is and that he loved me so much and he loves you so much that he died on the cross for you and I to be saved, to have salvation, not for a season, not for a time alone, but for all eternity. We cannot glory in our good works because we cannot produce good works. Only God can do that through a soul that's willing to submit and openly allow Jesus Christ to live, to rule, and to reign in your heart and in your life. What does that mean to you? God is good. And God is good. Listen to me. God is good when? All the time. Where's God live? Then that means God is good to live in our hearts. So that means we are to be good when? All the time. There's no time for us to take a vacation from God. No place to retire from God. No time for us to take time off away from God. You know, a lot of folks don't want to hear that today. I'm, I'm talking about church members. They don't want to hear that today. Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 10, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, that we should walk in in good works. That the light of Christ should be seen. God made us and created us to walk in a way that he will be on display at all times in all places. Remember, there's not a place that you can go as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ but what he's not there. And when he's there, there's light. There's no darkness. When he's there, you have the power, the strength, all that you need to be what God saved you to be. Spokesman, ambassador representing him. As believers, we not, do not have the command from Jesus to go out and to force people to come to him for salvation and to be what they ought to be. But we do have the commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We have the commission, the command from Christ to go out and to share him 
with everyone we come in contact with. You see, it's through the spreading of the word, of the gospel, the acceptance of it, and, and the living uh, of, of the word is how that others view our lives so that they can see the, the light of the world is living within us. If you're going around with a gloom and doom face all the time and always griping, complaining, and bitter and everything else, you need to get off the throne and let Christ in there because that's a joyful place. Good morning. We need to ponder in our hearts and make a decision what we're going to do today. And make the difference as to whether or not each one reaches one. Is there going to be joy in heaven that someone comes up to you and says, I'm here because of your life, your witness, your testimony. You're sharing Christ with me. Whew. What joy will be at set of sun in mansions beyond the blue to find some souls that you have won because someone saw Jesus in you. Do others see Jesus in you? Your life's a book before their eyes. They're reading it through and through. The question is, does it point them to the skies? Do others see Jesus in you? I pray that we'll so commit ourselves today to live with the goal to each one of us reaching one for his glory. Let me tell you something. There is no excuse. Say that with me. There's no excuse for us not reaching a 